in RC, I'm usually able to narrow it down to the last two options, but I consistently get it wrong. And so what do I do? What is that? Is a, that's, a, that's a question we are thinking about today. First of all, you have to keep in mind that this is an objective paper, that there is only one correct answer and super important. And so I find several students not even contemplating this question, saying, look, finally, it is going to be luck. I will narrow it down to two. If I'm attending 20 RC questions, sometimes 12 will come right, sometimes 8 will come right. I have to attempt more. It is not like that. You have to take a very serious, honest effort to drill down and eliminate their error rate. And so first thing is psychological, mental, to acknowledge that there is a skill to this and to practice and train with that. And so, so now what is the what is the approach one should do? Usually, when, when from an exam setter's point of view, suppose I'm setting an RC paper, so I'm giving you our uh, our cheat code, trick book. We'll usually find an interesting theme in the passage, so design the question like that, and then talk about four choices, where two will be tangential, that I can just fill in, pick up a sentence, make it confusing with the word, and write it down. And then one will be the correct answer. And then we spend maximum time trying to create that adjacent wrong answer. Just the answer that is tempting, juicy, enticing, all of that, but is wrong. And so usually if there are four choices, A, B, C, D, and you're down to B and C, if I want my right answer to be B, I'll dial it down and not make it bleeding obvious. What I'll do with C is I'll make it more attractive, but have one count on which it will be eliminated. There'll be something that is exaggerated, something that is unstated, something that is uh, uh, beyond what is given in the passage, something which tempts you to make an assumption which is actually baseless. So when you're when you down to the last two choices, look, B and D are definitely not the answer. I'm stuck between A and C. Then you say, look, A is uh, bland, but there's nothing wrong with it. C seems enticing. Now let me just open my eyes again and see if there is some exaggeration sitting in C. Am I, am I, is the choice assuming something that is not true. Is there something which is uh, which the passage says usually and the choice says always. The passage says rarely and the choice says never. Is there something like that with a with a word, with an extrapolation, with an exaggeration, which is with an assumption that's sitting there? So when it comes to the last two choices, one make a conscious effort to make sure you're looking for a ground to eliminate. Because if you're looking for a ground to select, usually the juicy wrong choice will, will stand out. Because I'm telling you this because that's how we set the papers. And so look for some ground to eliminate that one choice and that's useful. Uh, the, the other thing to keep in mind when you're, when you're down to these last two choices is one, it takes a lot of practice. So make sure that when you're going through the solutions, you go through and say, look, it's between A and C. It is on this ground that I've eliminated A. And then you look at that and you, you tell yourself, yeah, that is reasonable. I need to be switched on to eliminate on that ground. Don't gloss over the solution part saying hey sometimes half the time it will work for me half the time it won't such as life it is not that it is an objective paper so accept that it's an objective paper is only one correct answer it's not randomness it's not luck go through the solutions to fine tune this look to eliminate rather than look to select once or down to the last two it should help best wishes